Today, someone's getting rich off the Roblox marketplace. Can you guess who? This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where this week's Nintendo Indie World Showcase finally answered the question, are indie developers okay? The answer, a resounding no! Yeah, if you want to see cozy pastel games to distract you from your issues. Or a game about themes, so you can tackle those issues head on. Then Nintendo has you covered. Also a new Ninja Turtles game. Oh yeah, it's really good. I already played it on Apple Arcade. You don't have to post. You can actually not post. Post. I bet you at home have opened social media, started typing up a hot take or outsider opinion, and then thought, eh, too many people are going to give me a hard time for this. It doesn't need to be shared with the world. And then you deleted it and moved on. I've done it too, because we do not have the sheer confident audacity of a corporate executive. But Mike Ybarra, former president of Blizzard, does and felt that everyone needed to know his amazing idea about tipping publishers on an already full-priced game. Not DLC. Not microtransactions that ostensibly get you something. An actual tip. Quote, I know most will dislike this idea, smiley face, says Ibarra, ignoring the warning sign to not post. But he explains, quote, When I beat a game, there are some that just leave me in awe of how amazing the experience was. At the end of the game, I've often thought, I wish I could give these folks another 10 or $20 because it was worth more than my initial $70 and they didn't try to nickel and dime me every second. And then he lists a bunch of single-player games that aren't bloated with microtransactions as examples of tippable games, tacitly admitting that the crap he used to oversee at Blizzard is nickel and diming. For example, just this week, Overwatch 2's new season launched, and with it, new monetization systems. Players can buy mythic skins for their heroes with mythic prisms. Mythic prisms can only be earned with heavy air quotes through the premium battle pass, the one you pay real money for, or just by buying them. You can buy a basic mythic skin for 50 mythic prisms, or about $40, while a fully upgraded mythic skin will run you 80 prisms, or around $70 US. That's as many as 769 Norwegian kroner, and that's terrible. But Polygon's Michael McWhirter even depressingly notes, quote, The price of Mythic Prisms may be eye-watering for players who are looking to directly purchase Mythic Skins, but likely won't be a surprise for longtime Overwatch fans who have been conditioned to expect to pay $20 or more for a single skin. When you're boiling a frog, you're supposed to do it slowly enough that the frog doesn't notice. But players have been complaining about nickel and dime monetization for years, lauding games like Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 for selling us a game that lets us play the game. And that's it. Then Dumbass over here wanders online to say, actually, we should pay the publishers more. Because I promise you, the publishers are the ones getting extra cash in such a wild scenario, not the developers. Actually, Ybarra's out of a job right now, so maybe this is just blue check engagement bait. It's Sonic's 30th Shadowversary, and I have some big news about Sonic's boyfriend. He's got his own TV show! That's right, Knuckles spent some time blending into the red carpet recently to celebrate the premiere of... Knuckles! It's a show about... Knuckles! No idea what the genre is, but since it's streaming on Paramount+, Plus, I'll assume it's a medical procedural and he cures patients by punching the cancer out of them. Not to be outdone, Shadow is coming to the next Sonic the Hedgehog movie in what will probably be a tour de force, enemies to lovers, hurt slash comfort fic brought to the big screen. But Shadow needs a voice, and the casting agents did their fucking jobs to the limit and cast Keanu Reeves. Personally, I'm hoping for Shadow to be a combination of Ted Theodore Logan Keanu and Hamlet Keanu, and they just let him ad-lib about motorcycles and John Wick's guns for three hours and then cut it up into sound bites to throw on TikTok. Hey, don't let your kids play Roblox. It's an awful exploitative platform. Whoa, is this a spicy and unfounded opinion? No, it's a, it's a fact. And my evidence? The literal Roblox terms of service. A few days ago, Roblox announced they would be expanding access to their marketplace, allowing more people to sell avatar items there in order to make it, quote, more vibrant for buyers and sellers alike. 
At this point, you roll your eyes and say, that seems mostly like a way to increase the number of transactions they're getting a 30% cut of, but go off, I guess. And I say, 30%? That's peasant talk. This is Roblox. Let's bust out our chalkboard and break this down, MathNet style. First up, in order to even get items listed on the marketplace, you have to be on one of the two monthly premium Roblox subscription plans. So you either pay the company $13.99 US for 1,000 Robux a month or $27.99 for 2,200. This means that in the best case scenario, a Robux costs about 1.27 cents. But now you're subscribed and you're into the marketplace, which gives you the ability to list your items for sale once you pay the per item upload fee, which is 750 Robux per item, or about $9.50. Now you're ready to sell your stuff, right? No! First, you have to pay a publishing advance fee. And at this point, you're probably confused, because you've already had to buy a subscription and pay a fee, and because in every other scenario, an advance is something the publisher pays to you, but not here. In Roblox, a publishing advance fee is a refundable upfront fee you pay at the time of publishing an item, and it varies wildly depending on what you're selling, and whether or not it's a limited edition item. Let's say we're going to make a normal hat and attempt to sell that an infinite number of times. So that means that we pay a publishing advance fee of 1,500 Robux. That's about $19.05 US. But now we can make money, right? Sort of. If you sell an item on Roblox, you earn 30% of the sale price. The other 70% goes to either Roblox Corporation or a combination of Roblox and the experience owner where it was sold. Okay, cool. All right. So let's say we sell our hat for 400 Robux. Every time we sell a hat, we get 120 Robux, and Roblox gets 120 Robux, which they graciously refund to us until we pay off the publishing advance fee and the experience owner gets the other 160. That means it'll take 13 hat sales to earn back your advance fee, and then another six on top of that to get back the listing fee. Are 19 people going to pay $5 for your hat? If they don't, the only person who's made money on this is Roblox. But wait, you say, what if I don't care about capitalism and I just want to give away my hat because it's awesome? Well, good news. There's a fee for that. Per the terms of service, <clears throat> when publishing free limiteds, you must provide a per unit fee depending on the quantity being published and other factors like the type of asset being uploaded. This payment depends on a range of market-based factors and may change over time. As a hypothetical case, where limited hat items are 100 Robux per unit, if 200 limited hats are listed at zero Robux, the creator still pays 20,000 Robux to list this free limited item. For free limiteds, Roblox keeps the entire per unit fee. So if you want to give your hat away, you've just ended up paying Roblox for that privilege, and that seems bad. But what if we really care about capitalism and want to make something super special and collectible to encourage people to buy it? Good news, the advance fees are much higher if you want to do that. The paid limited publishing advance for a limited edition hat is 20,000 Robux. That's over $250. According to Roblox Corp, this wave of endless, variable, and nested fees is designed to keep subpar items out of the store. But according to us, this seems like a very good way to get someone to pay you almost $30 for the opportunity to maybe break even one day. And again, this game is supposed to be for children. It's hard to get truly comfortable playing some games on Nintendo Switch Online, since the Switch controller options only have that diamond-shaped four-button layout. My thumb always lands on Y and B instead of B and A, and remapping the buttons back and forth is a bit of a pain to do. So to combat this first world problem, the modder Inside Gadgets has ginned up a solution where you can use a Game Boy Advance as a controller for your Nintendo Switch. Did they hollow out a GBA and print a new PCB akin to the ones already inside controllers? Did they hardware hack a GBA link cable into some sort of USB nightmare? No, they made a game cart. A GBA game cart that pretends to be a Bluetooth controller. From an end user's perspective, it's a really simple solution. Just plug in the cart, pair the controller, and go. From the modder's perspective, though, it's 89 US dollars because 
simple solutions are sometimes really complex to make and also require you taking apart an 8-bit DO02 wireless controller, desoldering the chip, then mounting it to your own custom PCB that goes in the game pack. Of course, if that's up your alley, you can purchase the chipless version for 39 bucks and hope soldering is as easy as Ian makes it look. Tell me when they've made a mod that lets me control a PS5 from a Dreamcast VMU. Why? I just think it'd be funny. <laughs>Coming up, programmer Kevin Bentley has released the source code for Descent 3 on GitHub to enable archival preservation. No idea if he's technically allowed to do that, but we're pretty sure the IP is owned by Interplay and all they do these days is litigate the IPs they own, so hell yeah, Kevin, get them! An addendum to that Roblox story. More math, eh? Well, it's something Paul pointed out this morning and didn't have time. Well, the story is long enough on its own. Didn't have word count. We don't really limit ourselves, but you know, let's let's be honest here. Um, that uh, we, you know, <laughs> it's worse. the The point is, it's worse than even we described in the story. Because to get your money, so it's like everything's done in Robux. Yeah. Right. Which is their their currency. So and to, that's just something that lives in the system. Yeah. But you can cash out. You can like just like at a casino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had the the chalkboard stuff in there that Kathleen researched for like you know your sort of per cent how much how much real money you can buy a robuck for. Uh, it's not the same exchange rate to pull it back out. Okay. So and you can't pull it back out until you've reached a threshold of what was it, Paul? Thirty thousand robux. Thirty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Which is actually, it used to be 100,000. They brought it down oh, the good, from the goodness of their hearts. Oh. So I took that as being, okay, well, it's to buy, to buy like 2,200, you pay $28. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm like, well, if you're going to get. That's why it's 1.27 cents yeah. ish. And yeah. so I'm like, okay, well then probably what happens is they keep, they keep some percentage of those, the 0.27 cents. They're going to keep some of that for themselves on the, on the purchase out so let's just make it easy and say thirty thousand sounds like 300 bucks so you right. get 300 bucks back even though to buy thirty thousand you would have had to have like spent probably 360 380 or whatever it is you'd have to pay so you get right. 300 bucks out is that right uh what was the exchange rate there paul thirty thousand uh, bucks is uh that thirty thousand dollars uh gives you 100 us dollars a hundred you are losing two thirds of what you have generated on their service because let's be honest, you're the product. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, you could just be using all your Robux to buy other things in Roblox. Yeah. That's what they want you to do. Yeah, right? you buy all those hats that you normally, that you're like wanting people to spend their money on hats. It's, it's just like the, the user generated stuff in a lot of games is like, oh, so I'm the product. But this one, more than most, is like, I'm the product and I'm paying you for the privilege of being so. I'm not even sure. And now that I say it, it's like, I'm actually not even sure if you're the product. I think you're the sucker. <laughs> it, it is um, 0.35 cents. Yeah. So for one for one Robux. So it costs you 1.27 to buy in and then you get 0.35 to buy out. That's, uh, that's, that's wild. That's terrible exchange. Uh, wait until worse, you put it on worse the than PayPal, if that is even possible. <laughs> I was looking over Kathleen's shoulder while she was writing that story, and the first thing I read was that I thought I thought I confused something in my brain. Uh -huh. Like I thought that I was having like some not like aphasia, but like some sort of like because did I get the did I get the signs wrong? Is the decimal in the wrong spot? Like yeah, yeah it was the part where it was like uh, when a creator sells something on the Roblox like within the Roblox app, the creator gets 30%. And I was like, that can't be right. I was like, no, 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 this, this is the stand. It's the same for steam and Apple. It's no, the platform gets 30%, yeah. right? The platform double, huh? Yeah. The creator gets 30%. Yeah. What the crap? Well, that's because they want to pass part of it on to the experience owner, obviously. If, if that's even relevant, I guess. Yeah. I the know. experience is like you, like a level in Roblox. You There's like, People can make like games and environments and stuff, and those are experiences. And within those experiences, you can then have like a thing that sells the things that you make. Yeah. Which is, they want to keep subpar items off the store. And I'm like, you could just not allow 
subpar items on your store. Simply moderate. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, but not, I think more of a sense of like, uh, it's like, it would probably you coming up with all this is great because that means that if subpar items are making it to your store, it means that well the people who are making them are dumb enough to pay you that much money to try to earn subpar items. It's like your your motivation can't be I want to keep stuff off the store when you're trying to make money off of the stuff that's on the store mm-hmm. because I'm like no matter what that means that that you ultimately want to sell something, which means you want to entice people to bring things into the store to be sold. And, and I'm like saying, well, we do this to keep subpar items off the store. I'm kind of like, I don't think that's true because every, um, every marketplace or clearinghouse ultimately gets to a point where they're like the, the marginal difference between not having something on a store or making 10 cents off the sale of the thing on the store. I'd rather have the 10 cents, especially if I'm going to sell a hundred thousand of these things that are going to break anyway, or going to, or people aren't going to like, it's like, you'd rather have that. Like capitalism is grinding all of this shit into a fine paste. Mm-hmm. And, and we just, we end up with these bad experiences because it's like, it's better to sell something than not sell something. Store.loadingreadyrun.com. <laughs> Is your place to go for stuff that we actually think is it's good quality shit. It, so keep that in mind. Can I share a, a fun story that we didn't cover? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, it's aspects of it at least are fun. Something uh, you liked, sure. Yeah, this is this is the this is the Pokemon story. Basically, a oh yeah high level Pokemon card game VGC VGC. Yeah, sorry, not not like the paper card game, but yeah, yeah VGC player. Um, was has been called out by the community for transphobic comments yeah and uh they were not uh capitulatory about it and so people are like cool well kick rocks then and um (laughs) they've (laughs) in a previous like high level match recent yeah yeah, a recent one like a a couple months ago um that that player whose name you don't need uh had like three legendary pokemons Mm -hmm. defeated pokemon is it it's the plural as well anyway defeated by all three of them were defeated by their opponents among us uh and so the community is like yes trans rights icon among us and i just i I love that it tickles me too yeah they've decided that it's like oh yeah this is this is the good stuff i hope among us and blow high will be very happy Mm -hmm. together (laughs) i have one other thing sure to share if that's okay love to hear Uh, it fallout the series um it's been re- very well received oh that which you watch on a television yes i see uh, but that i have not yet but that i will okay um because it's infuriating that amazon hasn't seen what everyone else has been doing and was like great here's a binge drop funk and just all the episodes there mm. it's like don't haven't you realized by now that you get to stay in the public conversation for weeks at a time if you anyway yeah whatever um but uh some eagle-eyed viewers of the show uh eagle-eyed viewers slash lore nerds mm. so you know big big respect uh and i'm not being sarcastic when i say that noticed they were like wait a minute uh that thing on this chalkboard implies that one of the cities in uh that appears in fallout new vegas was was bombed ah. uh and it's not because you can go there in new vegas is this not is this not canonical my timeline oh yes right Todd Howard, uh, in an interview, was like, "No, no, I, we, I promise you, we actually care very deeply about the timeline. All right, all right. Everything that happens in the show, it, 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 it all fits. Uh, New Vegas is very much still canon to the Fallout universe and timeline." And he said, "In that one, I admit we're cutting it very close, but that city gets bombed." after the very soon after the events of new vegas and everyone's like oh okay cool glad it got bombed then i guess yeah anyway (laughs) it's just uh i just i like that uh just people are it's it turned out it was really good and then it seemed like people were like but maybe these maybe this is wrong and todd's like no no no, it's not it's fine and so it turns out the show's good my new head canon is that uh at just after every single uh, Fallout game, all of the places that you visited just got completely destroyed. <laughs> Everything you love must fail, must fall. Uh, Patreon.com slash loading ready run. Also become a member on this channel. Bomb that Patreon. Yeah, mm. wait. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.